Hey there everyone, thanks again for coming back today. In this lesson we're going to look at a new topic, topic 2.10, which is find the derivatives of tangent, cotangent, secant, and the cosecant functions. Remember from your trigonometry class, whether that be algebra with trigonometry or pre-calculus with trigonometry, there are six trigonometric functions. Previously, we've looked at two of the functions and their derivatives. And hopefully these are already memorized. We know that the derivative of the sine function is the cosine function, and the derivative of the cosine function is the opposite of the sine function. In addition to those, there's four more that we should know in this orange box below here. The derivative of the tangent function is the square of the secant. The derivative of the secant function is the secant function times the tangent function. The derivative of the cotangent function is the opposite of the cosecant squared function, or opposite of the square of the cosecant function. And the derivative of the cosecant function is the opposite of the cosecant function times the cotangent function. So there are four more that pretty much just need to be committed to memory as soon as possible. All right, now all of them can be proved one way or another, but if you just have them memorized, things can be much easier for you. But let's take a look at one of the proofs. It says prove here that the derivative of the secant is secant times tangent. All right, so let's say we have y equal secant of x. We should know from our previous trigonometry classes that secant is equal to one over cosine. And now we can use the quotient rule. Remember the quotient rule from last lesson actually is the denominator times the derivative of the numerator minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator all over the denominator squared. I don't know why I chose to use brackets in the denominator, but I did. So we're going to keep it there. All right, simplifying this, this is just zero. All right, so I get zero plus one times a sine, or just sine, over cosine squared, which of course then is just sine over cosine squared, okay? So now what we can do is if we think of this as sine of x over cosine of x times cosine of x, because that's what it is, right? We can split this into sine of x over cosine of x times one over cosine of x. And of course we know that sine over cosine is tangent and one over cosine is secant. And there we have our proof. Now I know we were asked to prove that it equals secant tangent and we proved tangent secant, but remember, you know, three times four is the same thing as four times three. So tangent times secant is the same thing as secant times tangent. All right, let's take a look at a couple examples and see how this is used. So we're asked to find the derivative of each. The derivative of y is y prime, or dy dx. The derivative of x, we know, is just 1, minus the derivative of tangent. If you already have the derivative of tangent memorized, that's great. If not, you can always look back at your notes for right now. The derivative of tangent is the square of the secant. So this is 1 minus the square of the secant function. And technically that's it. However, we did learn last year 
in your pre-calculus course, that one minus secant squared might look a little bit like an identity. Maybe, maybe not. We can take a look at that later on today when we talk about all the identities that you learned last year. But let's move on to part B. Here we have x times secant x. So this is a product rule. Product rule, remember, is the first function, which is x, times the derivative of the second function, which is secant x tangent x, plus the second function, which is secant of x, times the derivative of the first function, which is 1. And that's pretty much it. Could you simplify this a little bit? Sure. You know, maybe we can take a secant out, leaving us with x tan x plus 1. And if this is a multiple choice problem, this could be the answer you'd be looking for here. But if it's written, then there's no need to go that far. You can stop at the derivative that we took up here. All right, a couple more practice problems. So here we have f of x, the derivative of that would be f prime. And we have 5 times the derivative of cosecant. The derivative of cosecant is negative cosecant cotangent plus the derivative of cotangent, which is negative cosecant squared. And again, that is good enough if this is a written question. You know, if not, if it's a multiple choice question, maybe we factor out a negative cosecant. And that leaves us with 5 cotangent plus cosecant. But again, if it's written, this would be fine. Part B, uh, this is a quotient, so we're going to need to use the quotient rule for h prime of x. Remember the quotient rule is the denominator times the derivative of the numerator minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator all over denominator squared. And again, that would be fine. You know, if we need to simplify this a little bit, we can just copy down that first term there, 3x squared, secant squared x, minus 6x tangent x over 9x to the fourth. All right, and if we still need to simplify this a little bit further, we can see that each of these terms has a 3 in it and an x in it. So we can cancel out that 3 and that x, leaving with x secant squared x minus 2 tangent x over 3x to the fourth. So if it was a multiple choice question, that would probably be what the multiple choice answer would look like. And finally, p of x, which again is a quotient. So when doing the derivative of this one, we'll have to use the quotient rule yet again. which is the denominator times the derivative of the numerator minus the numerator I'm running out of room here times the derivative of the denominator the derivative of cosecant is negative cosecant cotangent And that's all over the denominator squared. Okay. So simplifying this one, we should see there's a cosecant in all these terms here. So we can actually cancel out one of the cosecants. And that will leave me with 2x minus 6. Sorry, it's plus 6, sorry. Minus negative cotangent. So I'm just going to put plus cotangent times x squared plus 6x minus 2 all over just one 
cosecants. So, is it a whole lot simplified? No, but it does look better than the first derivative we took. All right, so I mentioned this earlier, but here are some identities that you learned in your previous trig classes that we kind of need to know. Sometimes they help us with our simplifications. And that one problem we talked about earlier has to do with this identity right here. Okay, if I remember correctly, I think we had one minus secant squared. So one minus secant squared. If we rearrange that identity, it would be one minus secant squared would equal to negative tangent squared. So if we go back to that problem, we can actually write our answer for y prime as just negative tangent squared. And again, if this is a written question, this is perfectly fine. Leave it just like that. But if it was a multiple choice question, this answer might not be there. So you have to take a look at how you can manipulate it, and this answer would probably be what's there. Okay? If you need to take another look at those identities, feel free to pause this video and take a look as long as you need. Otherwise, that's it for lesson topic 2.10. All right? Thanks again for tuning in, and we'll see you again soon.